There was a distinct pause in the proceedings, and I was about to speak when I heard a loud but higher-pitched buzzing. Chris held another pair of clippers and without a word began to trim the hairline further. Trim was probably not quite the correct word. Shave probably would be. It was startling to note the short cuttings fly up in a cloud. These clippers sounded much more urgent as if Chris had to forcibly restrain them from moving away from the hairline and attacking the remainder of the short clipped back and sides. I was in total awe as the dark shadow at the hairline disappeared and seemed to climb up the back of the head as the clippers moved up. But it did not appear to be Chris's intention to shave, Pat. At least not on this occasion, as only a relatively small amount was removed, at the nape, at the temple, and around the ears. A small amount, perhaps, but they certainly sharpened and enhanced the style. One thing that was very noticeable was the redness that replaced the whiteness as the shaving of these areas proceeded, a sort of razor burn, I assumed, or perhaps a blush of embarrassment at the feelings being experienced. Certainly, I was feeling most peculiar at seeing Pat's hair being clippered in this way. It felt like I was watching something private. An undressing, if you like, but much more personal. I felt rather hot, rather flustered, rather embarrassed, I felt I had also gone red in the face. Perhaps I had. The clippers were turned off, and Chris whisked away the cape. Pat just sat there, staring. I decided to speak. Well, it's certainly different, Pat. It looks really good, though. And you will feel comfortable with your future colleagues. They nearly all have similar styles there, Chris added. Hmm, well, comfortable is not a word I would use to describe how I feel at this moment. Pat sort of whispered, while studying all aspects of the new appearance that could be viewed in the mirror. Neither did I feel comfortable. Just looking at Pat's crisp nape and precisely cut layers made me feel very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable indeed. Thinking back to how it looked a mere 20 minutes ago and replaying those 20 minutes in my mind once more jumbled my emotions. As Pat's hand explored that crisp nape, I saw a slight shiver which may have resembled the extremely large shudder that coursed through me, but which I attempted to disguise. Finally, Pat broke the silence by saying, But I guess I'll get used to it, won't I? I sort of nodded, not trusting myself to speak, as my throat had become very dry. As Pat paid and chatted to Chris, I gathered our things together. They both turned, and Pat seemed to be appraising me, looking a little surprised. Going somewhere? Pat inquired. Well, sorry, I thought you had finished. I was keen to leave and have a good look at Pat's hair and find out how it felt. I have, Pat replied, emphasizing the eye. And then it dawned on me what Pat meant. My stomach seemed to sink through the floor and I felt very odd. Oh no, Pat, come on, let's go. We came in here together for the same reason, didn't we? Come and sit down. Yes, but we didn't know that was going to happen, I said indicating the mound of cut hair surrounding the chair which Pat had just vacated. True, but do you want to be so different from everyone else when we start next week? My immediate thought was, yes, I think I do, actually. I tried to imagine sitting in that chair, having the cape thrown around me and the clippers turning on and my head pushed forward. I didn't have to try very hard, but tackling my emotions associated with my imagination was scary. There was no way I wanted my hair cut like Pat's. But I suddenly realized I wanted to know what Pat had just had experienced. Well, no, of course not, but... Pat came over and placed an arm around me and led me towards the chair in which the dramatic cropping had just taken place. Just come and sit down. It was Pat talking, a voice I trusted, so I approached. Nervously, I sat down. Look, Pat, I really don't want my hair cut short. You must know how I feel. I think I do, Pat replied. I felt Pat's hands run through my hair, lingering at the nape. I lowered my eyes and saw the mass of cut hair around the chair. I raised my eyes and saw Pat's crisp, clipped head in the mirror, and I shook uncontrollably. Pat smiled and called softly, Chris, please will you come over here? I think my friend would like to talk to you. Chris marched over, grabbed the cape that had so recently enclosed Pat, and stood behind me. Hey, that's great. So, you would like me to do something with your hair? I nodded. 
I still didn't want a cropping like Pat's. But clearly, I was not going to get out of here without some sort of change. My mouth felt very dry, and when I tried to explain what I would like, and more importantly, wouldn't like, then no words actually came out. The chair suddenly felt hot and clammy. I could feel it through my jeans clinging to me. I saw myself in the mirror-striped t-shirt, blue jeans, and my lovely hair. In reasonable condition, reasonably long, but perhaps a little short on style. I didn't see it for long as my view was suddenly obstructed by the cutting cape billowing down in front of my eyes and enveloping my body. It was light, but it felt like it was made of lead, so heavily did it weigh upon me. I could see a look of fear, fear of the unknown, perhaps, as I caught my reflection in the mirror. My hair was trapped within the cape as Chris fastened it tightly about my neck before flicking it out and arranging it carefully so it fell forward onto the cape, contrasting in its fairness with the black cape. Chris brushed my hair until it shone. I reflected on the fact that my hair looked pretty good in its typical student style. I really liked it the way it was. Why was I sitting here? I needed to think about this carefully. My emotions from earlier now seemed to be in check, and common sense returned. I even smiled, acknowledging to myself that I looked pretty good as I was. Chris saw the smile and interpreted it as a signal that I was happy to start, to have my hair cropped short. Right, so you're ready. I have to say your hair is particularly thick and well-conditioned. It is rather a shame that it has to be cut short. My mind raced. Well, that's all right. You're not going to cut it. I like it thick and long, too. Unfortunately, I hadn't said anything to stop Chris from proceeding. If I keep quiet, most of my hair will be gone in a matter of minutes. Sitting there, watching myself in the mirror, I tried to imagine myself with Pat's hairstyle. I couldn't, or didn't want to. I wanted to speak, but found, as I opened my mouth, that I was so short of breath and my throat so dry that I couldn't say a word. I saw Chris pick up the clippers, the large, heavy ones, that had ravaged Pat's hair so swiftly and effectively only half an hour ago. The emotions that had welled up in me as I watched Pat began to stir once again. I didn't expect that, not at all. 